Hey guys, what's up? Um, sitting here in the kitchen, getting ready to run outside. I was trying to take a photo real quick um, and I'm running out of light, but I was opening the mail. The kids are over there doing some homework and getting ready to go to a basketball game. This was just a particularly cool mail day and I wanted to show you a couple of these things. Now I don't always open our mail on camera because there's a lot of it and it's amazing i mean some of the things that we get sent are just absolutely incredible and i'm so thankful for it it is it's just a sweet gift one of my love languages is gifts and so sometimes getting to do what we do and receiving just such an outpouring of gifts that are thoughtful meaningful and kind um it's very infinitely more um in the place where I do feel loved. So I just want to show you all a couple of these things. So this is one of the first things that I opened from Angie Candell by Sarah Sue's Garden is what it says. Look at that. Is that amazing? Um, a little portrait of Bear. Like I almost hate to put this, it's, a, it's on a key ring, but I don't know if I want to put it on my keys because I don't want it to get messed up. I was trying to think of where I might can display that. Is that not just absolutely perfect? I was looking down for Bear. He's um, he's in the backyard right now with Lulu, so we're just going to show him. And then these, which is very cool, from Vanessa. Earrings that have um, a black iris and then black hollyhocks on them. So, so cool. Two of my very favorite flowers. So we, we get just the most incredible outpouring, as I said. It really does. Like, I, the, I cry over our mail frequently. Um... Also, I will often get things like this that I get really excited about, which because, you know, I don't, I don't need anything. I, I don't really like, I'm so thankful for everything, but people will ask, what can I get for you? And so I'll always put things on my Amazon wish list that, you know, would help me like with content or just things that I would like to have, but that because like I'm mindful of a budget, I don't just buy everything that I would like to have, obviously, like who does? But I, I like cookbooks, I collect cookbooks. You may have seen before that I have a pretty substantial collection. These are all cookbooks. Many of those over there are cookbooks. So I, I, when I see cookbooks that I think are interesting, I just put them on the wish list. You know, I was like, okay, this is something I would like to have. And I'm really excited about this one um, that Kelly May sent. Um, the Art of Simple Food by Alice Waters. So I'm excited to dive into that one. And then this other one also just came in um, from Jennifer I'm in Canada. So this is the Fresh Harvest Cookbook, four seasons, 150 recipes. So both of these I think are gonna be very valuable for farm life. I'm a huge, oh yeah, look at this. I just opened this one up to the page that it says turnips and rutabagas. I'm going to read. These are actually going beside my bed. I am a massive believer in the benefit and the power of inspiration and motivation. So when you have something you need to do, um, let me rephrase that because I don't know what you do. When I have something that I need to do, one of the ways that I stay on track is that I will consume information or media or whatever that inspires me to do what I need to do. So like I need to cook for my family. I need to fuel myself well. I need to do something with all of the food that we're growing. Cooking, when you cook from scratch and you cook a lot, it's very easy to get burnt out. Uh, so for me, cookbooks are a massive point of inspiration. I will literally lie in bed at night and read cookbooks and it triggers um, something in me that makes me want to try those things. Whereas if all I did was approach cooking as a chore and I would, you know, you get in a rut, you keep doing the same thing. So for me, by continually feeding on motivation and the brilliance of others and seeing beautiful pictures and things that inspire me, um, it helps me stay where I need to, to do what I need to do. Thank you all for these amazing gifts. And um, for all of you that send gifts that don't get open on camera, sometimes it's, it's hard. I haven't even showed any for a while because it feels like when I do, some people are like, well, why didn't you show mine? It's not that it isn't precious to me. It's just that there's a lot, but I am so grateful and it is truly an expression, truly of just goodness in my life that I'm like, man, this is special to me and I get to experience it in abundance. So thank you. 
I knew that was gonna happen. I got caught up fiddling in the mail and I lost the light. Look at that. Can y'all see? The moon is out entirely and it's full. So I started a challenge with my friend Daniel. So if you guys remember some weeks ago, months ago, I don't know how long it's been, I was testing out a camera that I had bought because I'd purchased some used camera equipment that I was giving to a friend for Christmas. I gave it to my friend Daniel. He has been taking photos and I challenged him. It's me, Goof Troop, what do you think? Lulu just saw me in the back, her and Bear in the backyard because I was coming out here to do this. So I challenged my friend Daniel to what is called a 365 challenge, which is where you take a photo a day, like intentionally. Because honestly, like he's at that point where he's learning and he's excited about it. My battery just died. And I, I've been doing photography for so long that sometimes it's like a little hard to stay motivated and inspired. Sometimes, you know, you can be so passionate about something, but again, you've got to seek out the motivation. And I knew that, honestly, Daniel's really just getting into photography and he's got this amazing new camera and he's really good at it. And I was like, he's gonna take photos regularly. He's carrying his camera around everywhere. And I was like, you know, this will be fun for him. It'll be motivating for him. It'll be something that we can both do, but it'll also really help me because I know he's gonna stick to it and this is gonna be motivation for me. So in a sense, I was also challenging myself. And we are currently five days in and i'm telling you guys about this at first i wasn't going to because i was like well you know whatever this isn't something that necessarily anybody else is going to want to do but as i was thinking about it today thinking about motivation i start opening these cookbooks start thinking about why cookbooks are so valuable to me and then i started thinking about the 365 challenge and i was like you know what i am going to share that and maybe it's something you wanna join me in. Maybe it's not gonna be a photo a day for you. Maybe it is. Maybe it's gonna be sitting down and writing in a journal for 10 minutes a day. Maybe it's gonna be maybe writing a couple lines of poetry a day or writing a couple lines into a novel that you're trying to work on. So many of you shared that you had these big dreams when I shared about like doing it scared. And I thought, you know, we're only five days in. You can catch up. The, the idea with the 365 is that you want to intentionally take a photo every day, but if you miss a day, just make it up. Like, don't make it a, a black and white thing that you feel like you're failing. Um, do it where it's fun. You want it to be fun and motivating. But, I, I mean, if you're interested in joining me, I'd love you to join and... Uh, you can tag me and you know what you share i'd like to see it or not you know you don't have to but if that would be motivating to you uh please do and because this is the nature of how these things go when you make your mind up and here i'm trying to get out the door my camera battery died so i'm gonna grab another battery and hopefully have enough light to at least get a couple more pictures i got one good one out there i can use but i'd like to get some more all right i have a new battery now <laughs> I got out there, I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I'm just gonna die right now. I like challenges, lists, checkpoints. He and I have been sending these photos back to, and forth to each other, and we just number them. Like the photo, today's the fifth, so the photo today is like five out of 365. And I'm keeping them in a folder so at the end of the year, I can see all this progress. That is also very motivating to me, so. Hey boy. What you doing? Nice. Ooh, doing a little parkour there, huh? Wow. Pretty good. Can I take your photo? Yeah. Oh, hello, chickens. Hey, little darlings. So the cool thing with doing something like a challenge, see, so you have the nudge, you have the push, 
And so often the things that we really want to do are reward in themselves. So I just got a photo of Helen. There she is. That I really, really like. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. So for the nature for me of doing the 365 challenge is that every day I'm going to use that as motivation, kind of push forward, and I'm going to intentionally take the time to do photography until I get something that like moves my heart, that makes me feel satisfied, that makes me feel inspired and encouraged and good. So I'm out here chasing the sunlight to get something because it was a busy day and I just wasn't thinking about it. And then we were actually downtown. So um, my friend Ashley and her family are in town. Um, she'll be, I think, on the next video. And we spent the day with them and had an amazing day. But we went down to our stores downtown and the light was awesome. And I'm like, oh, why didn't I bring my camera? The kids are all playing. They're working on stuff down there. And I thought, you know, a month or two into this challenge, I will not come places like this without my camera, but I've got to build the habit. And so frequently we have goals for ourselves. And many of you probably have like resolutions with New Year's or you have ideas of how you want to be as a person and things you want to do. And it's hard, it's hard to learn new things. It's hard to create new habits, it's hard to break old habits. But I find when you can grab hold of a little bit of motivation, when you have some sense of community in doing it, it makes it easier. I have an easier time doing things with somebody rather than alone. Don't always have that luxury. Sometimes you just gotta make changes all on your own. But having something of a checklist, a small achievable challenge, I'm not saying I'm gonna do a full photo session every day. It's just one photo a day. I can do that. And ultimately I end up with a handful of really good photos. But if I, if I don't and I just get one good photo, that's fine. But what's happening is, is I'm creating a habit to bring the camera. I'm creating a habit to notice the light. I'm creating the habit to go back in and get the battery. Rather than being easily deterred by the things like minor things from the big thing I really want to do, I'm using the motivation, Mommy. the small task, to create a habit. So I'm trying to run and keep running in the air, but it's too hard. Just watch me try. Watch you try to run in the air. Okay, I'm watching. So you come over here and take your run. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can't run in the air. That's true. That's a yep. hard. You can't go like keep going like that. Too bad, huh? Yeah, we need to make it longer and bigger around. <laughs> well. So this video is going to be kind of short just because I don't have a lot of light. But really, I think that it has the, the solid point. And I'd love to pique your thought process with this question. When you think of something that you really want to do, like you want to actively be cooking from scratch. You want to be growing your own food. Cooking from scratch goes hand in hand with that because on a farm what you grow is ingredients. Um, if you want to be somebody who's documenting, you want to be vlogging, you want to be writing. Um, many of you shared your dreams with me over this whole you know do it scared thing and that that took a lot of vulnerability for me to share where I've been and kind of some of the struggle that pops up even still for me with the idea of imposter syndrome all that stuff and I was I was hearing so many people share their dreams and their visions and the thing that they, they want to do and I've been kind of mulling this over and really thinking like you can do that thing that you want to do you can be the person that you want to be oftentimes what feels like a really massive change or a massive goal can be achieved through intentionally feeding that passion in yourself, intentionally feeding that skill, and then creating small margin every day to take one tiny step closer to that. And then what happens is eventually one day you're like, man, I cook from scratch a lot. I'm, I'm a gardener. I have documented well the things that I wanted to. I wrote a book. Like eventually what happens is you look back and those goals were made obtainable not by some massive grand gesture or some exhausting and impossible feat that happened all at once. More often than not, just showing up every day uh, with intention is how massive goals are met. So thank you guys for hanging out with me on my little short photo walk. It's very dark outside. I know my camera is deceiving um, because it makes up for for it, but it's actually sunset. So I'm going to go back in, cook dinner. I bless you guys. Until next time.